that we call on you a radical, so I want to get this video up to be an historical marker on the salmon collapse. It's, I mean, first off, it's six years ago today that I went into the acute bone marrow transplant center. I want to say thank you to my beautiful nurse that was in there that day, just turned I was quarantined, Whitney, Dr. Peterson, Dr. Vincent Hansen, Dr. Ash, Dr. Huda, Dr. Collado, Dr. Connors, who all saved my life, and all those beautiful, incredible nurses, you know, my incredible PAs, you know, all the CNAs, I mean, those CNAs who took care of me for so long, and everybody support, supported this historic fight. When I went in there six years ago, the survival rate is uh, of what I had less than 1%. Vincent Hanson took a chance on me. Fimbo Peterson, he took a chance on me. You know, it was the worst day of my life. No, the day before it was. You know, I was crapped up and I'm like, will it take away the pain? He says, it'll eat him up, the chemo, get it in me. You know, as I remember, I went in there that day, first thing they did was, you know, they put the central line in my juggler, put the stand in my lumbar puncture, put a stand in my lower spine, put a stand in my brain stem. Fuck, I'm like, what the, f you don't even know what hit you. And so I want to get in salmon numbers. I want this to be a historical marker, important video today on the salmon numbers. So they're in, the year's over. So let's start at the biggest one, the Bonneville, the Columbia River, the Bonneville count. Total, it's over, 487,000 for the year. Projection, 2.1 million. Now remember, this is on record escapement, record escapement, record escapement. Now let's remember, 2013, 1.15 million. 2014, 1 1.2 million. 2015, 1.35 million. 2016, projection of 1.7 million. Came in at 680,000. 17 projection, 2.1 million, 487,000. As I said from day one, I says, don't even argue with me, don't even fight with me till 2016 because the average Chinook goes to sea for five years. Now I want to make sure people understand this. This is why I think there's some confusion. This is on record escapement. Noah's models bursted out of the regressionary mean. I ran, I mean, ran regret, that's how I saved my own life when I got cancer. They sent me home with hospice. I ran regression over and over and I, because they told me I had carcinogenic cancer in my liver. <coughs> you know, it's just a stomach ache. <coughs> I ran regression over and over and it blew up out of the mean. I says, no, this isn't right, you know. And then I found a YouTube video. I want to say thank you to the doctor, Cedar Sinai, the pathologist, who I saw, found a YouTube video with 14 views. And it was, uh, and it was for his students. And it said, tumors in the lower right mesentery, which that's what I had, the pathology, I believe, they get it wrong more than they get it right. It's very difficult to diagnose in middle-aged men. That's when my light went on. I started arguing fight with Silverman, who had it dead wrong. They punctured it. They went in. Leukemia could present tumors. I knew that. You know, Vincent Hansen, who knew me since I was that big, was not for him, I would be dead. He figured it out and saved my life. You know, he took a chance. They don't send 51-year-old men with AML de nouveau leukemia in their body into bone marrow transplant. There's... They just don't because they don't survive. Statistical probability of surviving even two years is a couple percent. Five years is less than one. But he took a chance and he says, Kevin, I've known you since you were a boy. He says, he got all choked up. He's very emotional about it. He's a really famous oncologist around here. So, okay, let's go to the Copper River. I'm gonna use the biggest. This is the ones I watch. wanna watch, the biggest. Now the Copper River, just like I said, Five years, those big hallowed beasts started to collapse in 2016. They came in at 800,000 in 2016. They're projected at 1.6 million in 2016. They're projected in 1.8 million in 2017. They came in at 700, less than eight, I think 720,000. So let's talk about the uh, Nushak in Alaska on their collapse this year. They came in 35% of the projected mean this year. So you can argue me with all you want. The great Pacific, the dead tide pools. My next stop will be California, redoing the tide pools again, which I've done up to I don't know how many times, but I got to do it again 
because you're in epic denial. Look, this is the greatest ecological catastrophe. Me. I stood right here and says, Fukushima is going to give you leukemia. It's going to give you leukemia. It's going to give you leukemia. Right here. I says, they're lying, they're lying in my house and right here. They're lying. You know, I had the Pat Tillman thesis I went off on. I went on all this over and over and over. You know, called it to a fine science tea. I says, look, let's talk about the stillhead. So the stillhead number immediately started to collapse in 2012, after Fukushima 20. And I want people to very much know this, this collapse, this hypothesis that this has always been going on is a lie. That's not true. Absolutely not true. The collapse that happened in the 70s, the collapse that happened in there that was escapement, escapement, escapement. We fixed the escapement problem. We took care of the escapement problem. So that, it was, what's escapement? That's the fish that, make it out of the beds that make it to sea. We repaired that. It's one of the greatest success stories of all environmentalists and ecologists in human history, is that success story. The return of the salmon. The Indian, Native American hatcheries, that restoration project. I mean, that's how that NOAA, why would, did NOAA, University of Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, their models all blow up? Missed this so dramatically. I mean, the steelhead at the Willamette came in this year 99% below the projections. You heard me right, 90, they're on the verge of extinction. They go to sea for one year. It's just more evidence this is getting continually worse. It started, the, the steelhead collapse started in 2012, gradually, 13, 14, 15, to the point now that it's epic. It's, I mean, it's acute like my cancer was. So. I'm gonna flip the can right. I'm gonna get this right. No more dropping the can. The whole time I had cancer, I flipped the candy on my back. I never missed it once. Hundreds and hundreds of times. Never missed it once. Not once did I ever miss it. I've missed it since I got out of the. Well, I'm still in the fight. My chest split open, open heart surgery. The, I mean, I got tattoos up me. I had some light radiation. The central line went in here. It wore up my aortic valve. I almost collapsed, I almost died this year. Had open heart surgery in May of this year. You know, what a journey, what a fight. What a, like I said, I cannot say how much I love everybody who supported me, prayed for me, did everything for me. You know, show up in the streets with me. It's been a historic, historic fight. Six years of, I remember being in there. You know, and my stomach was going in and out of contractions. And I remember when I was in there and the nurses are like, holy cow, I've never seen a guy your age with a six pack like that. And I says, my stomach's been in contraction for a month being misdiagnosed. I got I got sick on October the 13th. Didn't land in the bone marrow trance until 11, 11, 11, not to be confused with 311s. Kevin Blanche, the 33rd soup can. Shows you I'm flawed, I can't catch it, I mean. You think about how flawless I was in those days. I think about it. My intense fight in airports in the middle of the night, walking the coast of California with platelets pants of 38 with no money. I was a millionaire when I got sick. I forked it all over. I think about this historic fight and how intense and how focused. I mean, I can't believe I did it. Walking through airports, you know, in the middle of the night in snowstorms, you know, and all over the world, all over. I mean, places I slept, things I did, literally on park benches. You know, people come save me. What a historic, historic, epic, epic fight. You know, the salmon, it, I mean, it's over. And you're in denial. You, you don't think this is going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's over. I mean, this is extinction. They're in violation of the Endangered Species Act now, well over 500 days. Going on 600 days are in violation. And that's not some opinion. That's the law. The law, the Endangered Species Act by law. <coughs> Trump is Obama, you know, they're nuclear morons. So, and the American populace, the people, they don't care. You know, go shopping. <coughs> They'll be walking over the dead bodies, going, you know, they're still buying fishing gear, they're still buying boats in Oregon. Tim sold his boat. You know, it's an historic epic collapse. You heard me right, 487,000. Projection, 2.1 million. <coughs> Sorry about that. Got a little bit of cough. Let's go back to DC. But so 
The Great Pacific Genocide Hypothesis by Kevin Blanche, the greatest PhD in human history. First you hypothesize. Sit right here. They're going to lie. They're going to lie. They're going to lie. <coughs> they're going to push it into the Pacific Ocean over and over and over and over again. They're going to genocide the Pacific. It's going to break the aluminescence. Big fish eat little fish. And, you know, I remember in the early days a woman in California says, Oh, that well? I'm right there standing by a dead well. Radiation surely couldn't kill that well. I said, No, they starve. That's what all these animals are doing. <coughs> starve it. Remember, it was me, the first one that reported that sucked up giant starfish, first one to report the dead birds. That's what's happening. I'm walking right there. I'm on the coast. I'm reporting in live in real time as this all this greatest ecological catastrophe in human history happened. As I say, it's the ecology, stupid. So thank you everybody supporting me. Sadly, the greatest PhD, first you hypothesize the knowledge, the new knowledge. This is real this academia high school model they've adopted is just that a high school model. It's a joke. They're not PhD, they're book reporters. And history's going to review it that way. These marine biologists, Daryl Licks, who everybody played on the winning team and went out there and attacked me, you know, said this isn't real. And, you know, what they've turned YouTube into right wing freaking talk radio is a joke. So as this goes forward, <coughs> I branded myself in history, and so did you. It's going to give you the key. It's going to give you. Walk the tire coat. It's going to kill the type. It's kill the type. I documented, not only did I have pauses, I did all the field work on my own, you know, with our small group that supported me, you know, but I did it by myself. You know, just like fighting cancer. That letter to Steve Jobs, it's out there. He wrote that letter. Because one of my doctors was one of Steve Jobs' doctors. His name's Rob, famous military doctor on 11 11 11. He says, I says, you think he wrote that letter? Oh, yeah. Yep. No one can fight cancer for you. Yeah. What a historic epic fight. I'm still in it. I'm still in the fight. You know, so. I appreciate everybody supporting me, did all this work for me, you know, the fight goes on, I don't give up, I want to say this so people understand this, this is really, really important, who am I and what I am I, one thing, simply one thing, all I do every day, every day is fight for the people that this, the nuclear energy crime said to get murdered, that's all I do, that's who I defend. I watch so many of my friends die, so many people die. I, I'm in support groups, I'm in hospitals, I'm all over the world. That's what I do. That's what I am. They're dead. They were murdered in the prime of their lives. Modan, Annika, my dad, Paul, freaking Carla, Marsha Jensen. I can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. That's who I'm fighting for. You know, anybody who's had a loved one or a child or somebody, a friend who died much too young from this man-made evil disease called leukemia, which is, nuclear fallout is leukemia. The nuclear crime said nuclear energy <coughs> is leukemia. That's who I'm defending. That's all. That's all. I'm fighting them. And for my grandchildren and your grandchildren, the unsprouted, the unborn, the unhatched. That's who I'm fighting for. Period. 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 You know, I was given a second chance. Forty-four of us went into that unit that year. Right, they're very acutely. It's me. I'm the only one alive out of that group. That's it. You know, I've met other people, you know, that have come through through bone marrow transplants, and I'm the only person they know of on Earth, on Earth, who survived AFS, uh, AML OS de nouveau leukemia in their body willingly without a bone marrow transplant. I was too sick for one. And I know that I can get one still, a bone marrow transplant, at any time. Brian's the only other guy. He did it unwilling. And they sent him home. His cancer's back after nine years. It's back. He's going to have to have a bone marrow transplant. So I know what I'm up against. You know, I fight for them. Period. Period. And so anybody that attacks me and goes after me, whatever, I mean, just throw the karma on you. That's all I do. <coughs> That's all I do every day, all day. That's all I'm doing every day, all day, is defending them. Period. 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 So you can go ahead. You can attack. You can do whatever. At your own peril. Go, go for it. Because talk about karma you throw in. Because you attack me, you attack them. You know, as I say, for the angels that they murdered. You know, I've done this on pure blind faith. I think about it. You know, I've showed up in places, no place to sleep. Just again, just like it. I got no place to sleep. It's raining. I'm cold. I'm broke. Foreign places. I don't even know where the hell I'm at. And then I just tell myself, you just go, you just go. Everything will be okay. It'll be okay. And there's always an angel somewhere, somehow, somewhere. You know, Dan in Copenhagen, Parade in Vienna, you know, always. You know, I've slept in some horrible places and done some crazy things. Airport floors, 
in trains, on park benches, been hungry, been cold, been tired, been beat up. You know, I think about my walk along the coast. You know, feels like heaven. Talk about the cure. I mean, how spiritual is that? I walked the entire coast of California. I mean, you think about it, plate pants 30 out. By the way, Astro also walked with Rex. They went to Pacific Trail, Astro's noise. And the real one, not Lori Pony, as he's dead. So stay in tune it. I love all you guys. <laughs> For the little guys. The baby's born post 311. March 11, I have two of them. My two grandsons are a week apart. They're both named after me. A week apart. You know, they're in the first grade now. <laughs> well, you don't think I defend them? My work will historically look back, and people will say, that. not only did he do all this work and fight and defy all the logic of all the odds, but I think the biggest historical piece of this is going to be the attacks. The squashing of you camps, the going after me, the hate, what I was up against. And I had guns in my face twice, you know, in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and in California. Monsters. I think that's what people are going to really look back. The greatest ecological collapse in human history. These salmon numbers are unarguable proof that it's Fukushima. Because it wasn't like this. That's a lie hypothesis. It was like this. It collapsed quick, fast. So, I mean, the tide pools, that hypothesis, they didn't die. We have videos in 2010. Live, they look like a Frank Stella painting. They're dead. You wouldn't believe me, so I says, okay, I'll go walk the whole coast. I walked the whole coast and proved to you. Video after video, after, I've been up and down, I mean, lots of multiple times. They're dead. They're dead. Completely dead. The salmon will collapse. You know, the Pacific Ocean's probably, you know, who knows how far it's gone. And I use the word genocide. I don't, I don't, I, you know, there's still Native Americans, right? They were genocide. There's still sequoias. They were, but what, 5%, 4%? You know, you guys that are wrapped up this land, is my land, this, you know, just remember this. They murdered 100 million Native Americans. Bounties on their ears. $25 for a child, 50 for a woman, 100 for a man. That was in the year 1890. Do the math, that's $10,000 for a man. Murdered them. I mean, and these people went along, so these people, you don't think they'd come for the sea? It's just going to get worse. It's going to be really ugly this year. And economically, socially, philosophically, it doesn't matter. It's your biology. And I hope all the children as they get older, and I think my grandkids, they can look back. I can hear it out of Alley Boy's mouth now. He's already a little activist. He's screwed. He already got his first victory on Polk. I mean, he's the guy that started. He's in first grade. You know, he's in a lot of my videos. I can hear him now. Oh, did my grandpa defend. How did he defend that from long ago? Very emotional day today. Got a very emotional fight for six years. I'm so happy to be alive. You know, I get to see my grandchildren. I got to dance with my daughter in the training see on her wedding. You know, both my daughters. I got two of them, but three, I got to go to their weddings. I got to take my grandsons to their first days of school. I got to be with my beautiful granddaughters, you know. You can see a lot of cool stuff, a lot of beautiful stuff. And still, thank you to everybody.